All right, welcome back party people. Today we're gonna to talk about doorbell cameras. Doorbell cameras are popular because they allow you to capture video from outside your home and stream that over a Wi-Fi connection using existing power to your doorbell. So it makes it really easy to convert an older style doorbell button to a newer doorbell camera. But there are some things you need to look out for if you're transitioning from the old traditional doorbell to a doorbell camera. So in today's video, I'll show you the operation of a traditional doorbell versus a doorbell camera and how you can successfully transition your home. Now, my intent is not to go over the installation of a doorbell camera. The intent here is to point out how to prepare your home for a doorbell camera if you're transitioning from the older doorbell. I'll just review what components you'll get when you purchase a doorbell camera. Usually you'll get the doorbell camera itself, so the actual doorbell unit, and that is gonna replace the old traditional doorbell button. So you're gonna to need to know the location of your doorbell button because that is where you're gonna wire in your doorbell. So the other component you'll find with the doorbell camera besides the unit itself is a doorbell chime kit. So that means you're gonna to have to find your doorbell chime. Usually it's somewhere near the front door. Uh, for example, this is my front door and my doorbell chime is actually located to the right and above the front door. Since I already have my chime kit installed, I'm gonna remove this cover here. This is what your chime kit will look like. It's this little white box here. Yours may be a different color, but just know that when you buy a doorbell camera, you're gonna receive something that looks similar to this and it's going to have to be wired up to your doorbell chime. When you purchase the doorbell camera, you will also receive instructions on how to download an app that will allow you to set all the different parameters and also view the video. Those are all of the components that you will receive with your doorbell camera. And there's one other thing that you must find in your home, and that is the doorbell transformer. So the function of the doorbell transformer is to drive the chime. Here's a close-up of the doorbell chime, and you can see those two magnetic strikers there. If you look very closely in there, you can see the copper windings. So as those coils get energized, the strikers push out and you get the ding and then the dong. And you may be able to locate your doorbell transformer either inside of a breaker box, it could be inside of a utility room, or even inside an HVAC closet or attached to the HVAC unit. In my home, the doorbell transformer is located in the garage on the wall. So it's very important that the specs of this doorbell transformer meet the requirements of the specifications of your doorbell camera. Otherwise, you can get some very intermittent connections. This is what a doorbell transformer looks like close up. It's probably gonna look similar to this. It may be a little bit bigger uh, based on the specifications of the transformer. Now, what this does is actually step down the voltage to a specified amount. If we look at this one very closely, we can see that this is a 10 volt transformer, five volt ampere power rating. This was the old transformer that was installed in this house. The specifications for most of these doorbell cameras are from 16 volts to 24 volts AC. So this particular transformer is underrated. The voltage would drop dramatically under load. Uh, and sometimes I would see uh, nine to eight volts AC uh, based on the load of that. And that was below the specifications of the doorbell camera. And what you'll get is, you know, the, the, it'll work fine for a day, but as soon as it starts to write a bunch of files and then perhaps maybe somebody hits the doorbell, any of those things could trigger an under voltage scenario and it just can't uh, supply enough current to power the, the doorbell. And, and basically it, it's almost like it's done a factory reset. So the one thing you want to do is make sure you check your doorbell transformer, see what the ratings are, make sure that it can supply enough voltage and, and typically it's around 16 to 24 volts AC. Now I'll put a specifications for my particular doorbell in the video. It is an Amcrest. I think the model is an 8410, but I'll definitely put it in the video. This is the 8410 
doorbell camera model that I have currently. So you can kind of see what all the different specs for this are, the type of camera, the type of CMOS image sensor, what resolution is capable of. That's very useful information. But the one thing that you don't see are the power requirements, not necessarily listed out here because that's kind of boring stuff. You probably wouldn't read it most of the time anyhow. Come on, let's be honest with ourselves. But uh, what you need to do is go in and click on the technical specifications doc. And this is going to bring up your real specifications here. And what you want to do is go down and look at power requirements. Now, look at this. Power input. AC, 16 volts to 24 volts AC is the requirements for the power input. Or it could be a DC 12 volt to 20 volt. Well, in our case, and in most homes, they're probably AC circuitry um, because they're just transformers that step down your 120 volt AC coming in the house to something usable by the device. And we can see here, if I had a look at this before I actually purchased the camera, I would have known that I needed to uh, step up my power transformer to a larger voltage. Mine was rated at 10 volts AC, so not even close. Don't make the mistake that I did by assuming that your transformer was good because you have a house that, in my case, was built in 2003. It was probably built on 2002 or 2001 technology. And I just assumed that it was going to be a 16-volt uh, AC transformer, but it indeed was not. It was 10 volt, so it was severely underpowered for that doorbell camera. And so after I changed out that transformer, the doorbell camera started operating normally, and uh, I have not had an interruption since then. These are easy to replace. You don't need to be an electrician, but if you don't feel comfortable uh, working around electricity, uh, hire somebody to come and replace this for you. Just remember, you want to turn your breaker off, make sure that uh, you're not uh, shorting out any of these connections. Now, newer transformers may have multiple loads here. Uh, for example, my new transformer has um, three screws here, and it tells you if you connect to these, you know, certain two screws, you get 16 volts AC, or I have to go look at it, but if you connect to the other two screws, uh, you could get 24 volts AC. So I think I'm running mine on 24 volts. I'll verify that in just a second. But just know that most of the newer transformers, they're slightly bigger. So it looks like we have an 8 volt, a 14 volt, and then a 24 volt. And notice my doorbell wires are across the 24 volts. So that's going to satisfy the requirements of my doorbell camera, which is between 16 volts and 24 volts AC. All right, so just to recap, you want to make sure you know where your doorbell is located. You want to make sure you know where your doorbell chime is located and then also your doorbell transformer and make sure your doorbell transformer is within spec. So let's go take a look at the difference in circuitry of a traditional doorbell and compare that with the circuitry of a doorbell camera. And we can start to see then why we need this little chime kit that is wired across our transformer there. All right, so let's take a look at a traditional doorbell circuit here. And I am, if you don't know by now, my channel is like the uh, channel of crappy diagrams. Keeping in line with my reputation, I'm just gonna scratch this up on GIMP here. All right, so remember we are working in AC here. So everything is gonna be in volts AC and our current is alternating. Draw a simple transformer here, and this is going to represent our doorbell transformer. So in our case, this is 120 volts AC. So your breaker box is going to be located somewhere over here. These are going to be your inputs. And then we're going to step down that voltage. So we've got our secondary winding here. So we're looking at a 10 volt tap here, and that's going to drive our doorbell circuit. So if we draw out our circuit here, our doorbell is basically a switch. And uh, over here on the chime side, we basically have a solenoid, as I showed you earlier, as it gets energized, those strikers hit the, the bars and makes the traditional ding dong sound. So this is your doorbell button. So in traditional sense, the doorbell is a momentary switch. It's also normally open. So at this point we have, we know we have 10 volts across, and this is a normally, open switch. So as you press the doorbell, then this switch closes. And now we have our 10 volts across our solenoid here. And the current can now flow. 
And that's going to create that striker, ding dong, ding dong. And that is, in high level sense, how your doorbell transformer works and how your doorbell button works in conjunction with your chimes over here. So this is your chime. I showed you that I had to replace my doorbell transformer because it did not meet the spec. So this was too low of a voltage to run a doorbell camera. Now, let's compare that to a doorbell camera. Instead of cutting and pasting it, breaker box, 120 volt AC. Now let's say, I'm gonna represent this as a larger tap on our secondary winding. So now we have, remember I showed you, I had it, the doorbell wires across the 24 volt AC terminals of the secondary or the load side of this transformer. So basically this transformer is said to be stepping down the voltage, right? So this is a usable voltage for low voltage uh, components. All right, so now what we have is 24 volts AC. So we've got this resistive load here. And this is your, your camera, your doorbell camera. Now these things are electrical components, so they need to be powered. So essentially what you have now, let me go ahead and draw this solenoid out over here. Essentially what you have now is a load here and it is being powered consistently. So instead of having a circuit with a switch in it that's normally open as in traditional doorbell, now you must use those connections to power the actual camera. A switch doesn't need to be powered, right? It's just controlling whether the circuit is open or closed. But a doorbell camera, which has components, it needs electricity to run. So it is a load in the system and there's gonna be some voltage drop, right, across this load. And what's happening is, is there's a current flowing in this circuit all the time, a oh, current I. Remember your Kirchhoff current laws, your Kirchhoff voltage laws, and your basic Ohm's law, right, V equals IR. Now, what will happen in this scenario is that since there is current flowing in this circuit because it is closed and now we have a current flowing, this solenoid here becomes slightly energized. It's not enough current to really ping the striker, but it's just enough current to create a maddening hum, right? And so if you connect a doorbell camera to your existing chime and you do nothing to it, then you will get this annoying hum created by this current in this loop. So now that we have current flow 100% of the time, what we want to do to make sure that our doorbell chime operates when the doorbell button is pressed here, and also we don't want to hear that annoying hum, we do something called a current divider. So if we extend this diagram, wow, big brush, big brush, too big. All right, so if we extend this diagram out and we add this passive load here, right? What we've now created is we have some current that is flowing in this circuit all the time. And that's split at these branches. So we have another, so we have I2, we have I1, and then we have current down here, which is I3. And this is basically a current divider. Similar function as a voltage divider, but when we're working with current here, we split off in parallel. So we have these parallel connections now right here. So remember our Kirchhoff's current law says that current flowing into a node must equal the current flowing out of the node. So this input current here is being divided. Part of it is going through to energize the solenoid. Part of it is going down through this resistive load here. Now the purpose of this resistive load here it is sized, right? So it's sized correctly to eliminate that annoying hum that you would get because current is flowing in a circuit. So now we have reduced the amount of current that is going through this solenoid because we split it, remember the Kirchhoff's current law, because we've divided that current across another load that's in parallel with it. That eliminates the hum that you would hear if you didn't have this resistive load in parallel with your solenoid. And that hum is created by 
the energy in that solenoid. It's not quite enough to actually move the striker, but it's enough to resonate. And that's what you're hearing. Our doorbell is a load here that needs to be powered. So you can't have an open circuit powering a device, right? Current needs to flow, so the circuit has to be closed. And this is a look at a high level. Now, we could actually go and do some measurements and get some calculations of the voltage drop here. We could actually put our multimeter in line since there's not a lot of current flow here. We could put our multimeter here and actually measure how much current is going into our node. And we measure the resistance of this little white box. Remember I showed you my chime and I had the little white box that comes with the doorbell camera. Well, that little white box is basically this resistive load here. Now we can measure this white box. Like I said, we can measure resistance value. We could go in and measure the current in this node and we could go and calculate what all of these currents are and what all of these voltages are if we wanted to. But for this discussion, it is not important. Just know that the function of that white box is to create a load that will dissipate some of the power so that the solenoid is not constantly energized. Now, what happens when we press the doorbell button here? There could be multiple ways this operates. I don't know because I haven't taken the doorbell apart. I wanna keep it running because it, it functions. Uh, but I suspect there's probably either some kind of capacitive discharge or some some other operation to spike this current up enough to really energize this. Okay, I'm gonna also provide an alternative way to think about this using the water analogy. Now, I don't agree 100% with this analogy, but it does kind of get the point across, especially if you don't know all the technical details about electricity. All right, so let's say we have this water source here. So there's some flow of water and we have this garden hose. Right, and so we have this constant pressure, right? So we have a water regulator on a house and then by the diameter of this water hose here, we get this flow of water through our water hose. And let's say we add a splitter and now we have the original diameter hose down here and let's say we have this little spigot. So we got some water coming out here and we have this smaller diameter tube and we have some we're coming out based on the sizing of this tube here we can control the amount of water flow so voltage equals pressure you can think of the charge that flows that the same as water and you can think of current as the rate of flow water so essentially what we've done here is by the sizing of this tube essentially the same thing as a resistor, right? We are controlling the amount of water flow through this tube, and that is essentially serving the same function as controlling the amount of current in our parallel circuit, uh, as far as our chime kit that is connected in parallel. And so you can see here that we have this flow through this particular branch and we have a different flow through this particular branch based on the sizing of our water tube here. So essentially this is the water analogy and uh, although while there are some discrepancies in this analogy I think sometimes it can be useful for beginners to really understand how electricity behaves. All right, so that will do it for this video. I hope this video armed you with enough knowledge to understand how a traditional doorbell works versus a doorbell camera and what you need to look out for when you're purchasing a doorbell camera and moving to transition from a traditional doorbell to a doorbell camera. Well, next time, heal up and ride, fan up and go, and just remember, everybody needs a plan B. Watch out for now.